Over the Constitution Avenue entrance to this building is a Latin inscription that translates, everything is created by law and order. That ancient principle still holds true. Our free society depends on the rule of law, the assurance that ordinary citizens can go about their lives without being subject to arbitrary violence or fear. When the rule of law breaks down, the promise of America does also. Our nation is now confronting two serious challenges to the rule of law. The first is a long-standing one, but was recently crystallized and driven home by the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The video of the police conduct in this episode, as I said before, is harrowing. When you watch it and imagine that one of your own loved ones was being treated this way and begging for their lives, it is impossible for any normal human being not to be struck to the heart with horror. This matter is being pursued by both the state and the federal government. The state has filed already second degree murder charges against one of the officers and aiding and abetting charges against the other three officers. As we typically do in cases such as this, the Department of Justice and the FBI is conducting a parallel and independent investigation into possible violations of federal civil rights laws. The president has directed me to spare no effort. We are coordinating uh, our work with the Attorney General of Minnesota. And as a matter of comedy, the, part, the Department of Justice typically lets the state go forward with its proceedings first. This afternoon, our United States Attorney in Minnesota and the FBI Special Agent in Charge of our Minneapolis field office, the FBI's field office, will attend a memorial service for Mr. Flo Floyd. Today is a day of mourning. And the day is coming soon, I am confident, when just, justice will be served. George Floyd's death was not the first of its kind, and it exposes concerns that reach far beyond this particular case. While the vast majority of police officers do their job bravely and righteously, it is undeniable that many African Americans lacked confidence in our American criminal justice system. This must change. Our Constitution mandates equal protection of the laws and nothing less is acceptable. As the nation's leading federal law enforcement agency, the Department of Justice will do its part. I believe that police chiefs and law enforcement officials and leaders around the country are committed to ensuring that racism plays no part in law enforcement and that everyone receives equal protection of the laws. In October 2019, the president established the first commission on law enforcement since the 1960s. And I am meeting with them later this month. And I have been talking to law enforcement leaders around the country. And in the weeks and months ahead, we will be working with community leaders to find constructive solutions so that Mr. Floyd's death will not have been in vain. We will work hard to bring good out of bad. Unfortunately, the aftermath of George Floyd's death has produced a second challenge to the rule of law. While many have peacefully expressed their anger and grief, Others have hijacked protests to engage in lawlessness. Violent rioting, arson, looting of businesses and public property, assaults on law enforcement officers and innocent people, and even the murder of a federal agent. Such senseless acts of anarchy 
are not exercises of First Amendment rights. They are crimes designed to terrify fellow citizens and intimidate communities. As I told the governors on Monday, we understand the distinction between three different sets of actors here. The large preponderance of those who are protesting are peaceful demonstrators who are exercising their First Amendment rights. At some demonstrations, however, there are groups that exploit the opportunity to engage in such crimes as looting. And finally, at some demonstrations, there are extremist agitators who are hijacking the protests to pursue their own separate and violent agenda. We have evidence that Antifa and other similar extremist groups, as well as actors of a variety of different political uh, persuasions, have been involved in instigating and participating in the violent activity. And we are also seeing foreign actors playing all sides to exacerbate the violence. The Department of Justice is working to restore order in the District of Columbia and around the nation. Here in Washington, we are working with the local police, the citizen soldiers of the National Guard, and other federal agencies to provide safety and justice. We have deployed all the major law enforcement components of the department on this mission including the FBI, the ATF, the DEA, the Bureau of Prisons, and the U.S. Marshal S Service. Their leaders are with me today and will be talking shortly. I thank all of these leaders and their components for working bravely and professionally to protect the district. I'm pleased to say that, especially over the last two nights, the demonstrations, while large, have been peaceful. The Justice Department is also working closely with our state and local partners to address violent riots around the country. Our federal law enforcement efforts are focused on the violent instigators. Through the FBI, U.S. Attorney's offices, component field offices, and state and local enforcement, we are receiving real-time intelligence and we have deployed resources to quell outbreaks of violence in several places. I urge governors and mayors and other state and local leaders to work closely with the National Guard and with us. The federal government has thus far made 51 arrests for federal crimes in connection with violent rioting. We will continue to investigate to make arrests and to prosecute where warranted. When I was Attorney General in 1995, 1992, riots broke out in Los Angeles following the acquittal by the state of police officers accused of beating Rodney King. Ultimately, the Department of Justice at my direction filed federal civil rights charges against those officers. As President Bush assured the nation at that time, quote, the violence will end, justice will be served, hope will return. The same is true today. The rule of law will prevail. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce my colleague, Chris Ray, the director of the FBI, and I have to say, this is the FBI that I've had the pleasure of working with over the last few days, the FBI that I know and love, that have really stood up here and performed magnificently, not only here in DC, but around the country and in all their field offices. And uh, their uh, enforcement functions, their intelligent functions are now in full gear. Uh, and I'm confident that with the FBI's leadership, we are going to deal effectively with the criminals who are involved in extremist violence. Chris. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.